The suspension system of a car is made up of many components that are designed to work together. The sway bar link is a part of the suspension that is rarely discussed but has an important function. Knowing the signs of a bad sway bar link as well as the function of these parts is crucial. In this video, we examine the main signs of a damaged sway bar links. We will also calculate the average cost of replacement of this item and tell how to change sway bar links manually. It's the Car Problems YouTube channel. Subscribe and let's get started. We will start the video from symptoms of a bad sway bar link. Strange clunking or popping noises. The most prevalent symptom is the presence of strange noises. It's typical to hear some clunking and popping noises when the sway bar links break. If you drive over uneven or bumpy terrain, you might hear the noises more. The sway bar links are moving more than they ought to be the cause of these noises, which are brought on by the play in the ball joint. Any noise made while going over bumps should prompt a suspension inspection right away. Extreme Body Roll Vehicle stability is lacking in the absence of strong sway bar links. You'll notice more leaning without this stabilization, especially when navigating turns. In fact, when the sway bar links malfunction, this is typically the first symptom to appear. The same issues may arise if the sway bar itself is giving you trouble. This makes it necessary to conduct a thorough inspection in order to ascertain the situation. Unusual vibrations. You might feel odd vibrations for the same reasons that the car might start making noises. You could probably feel the popping or clunking as it happened inside the cabin. The vibration may occasionally be felt in the steering wheel. It might, however, become severe enough to cause your seat to vibrate. Poor handling. It should be clear that the car's handling will deteriorate given the other issues mentioned. Once the sway bar links are damaged, stabilization is lost. Poor handling results from this issue, especially when tackling a corner. The steering of your car might feel sloppy. Even some drifting might be apparent as you turn a corner. Generally speaking, the sensation can be compared to how a car feels when a tire blows out. Uneven tire wear. Your car will handle curves in an unusual manner due to the increased body lean. Even though it's not very common, there could be more uneven tire wear than usual because of how the car handles differently. On occasion, you might see the beginnings of bald spots on the tires. It's also possible that one tire side has worn down more than the other. This type of tire wear not only makes you need replacements more frequently, but it can also impair how your car handles on the road. It's critical to have the issue fixed as soon as possible because you don't need anything to make your drive more difficult at this point. Sway Bar Link Location Knowing where the sway bar links are located is necessary before you can replace them. A single sway bar is typically found at the front of most cars. Some models, though, also come with a sway bar in the back. Through the sway bar links, the sway bar is bolted directly to the vehicle's suspension. Links can be found on either side of the sway bar as a result. Sway bar links come in a variety of styles. Some types use a long bolt with bushings and a sleeve, while others use studs and ball joints. Reading up on your car's sway bar links in the service manual will provide you with more information. Replacement Cost The sway bar links may cost between $150 and $250 to replace on average. However, the components are inexpensive, usually costing no more than $100 for a pair. The cost is primarily increased by the cost of labor. For this reason, you could save a lot of money if you can change the sway bar links on your own. All you need are the appropriate tools and some fundamental knowledge. How to change sway bar links Disconnect old links. You can access the sway bar and links while your car is raised on jack stands or a lift. You might require a specialized tool to detach the link from the sway bar. The stud attaching the link to the suspension system is held in place by this tool. Once the stud is in place, you can remove the nut by using a wrench to loosen it. With both nuts removed, this needs to be done to the top and bottom of the sway bar link. After you've done that, the sway bar ought to be simple to remove. You must use a special tool or pliers to hold the backside of the sway bar link if you loosen the nut and discover that it simply spins as a result. Install new links. You can add the new lock nut by using a wrench to hold the stud on each link's end. You should purchase new lock nuts because they shouldn't be reused. To position the lock nuts correctly, it may occasionally be necessary to compress the suspension. You need to tighten the nut with your hand after the sway bar link is in place. Use your wrench to complete it once it reaches the lock nut. To prevent over-tightening, refer to the manufacturer's torque values. Test drive the car. It's time to lower the car back to the ground and take a ride once the new sway bar links have been installed. Check the car out briefly to make sure everything appears to be in order. It's critical to take care of any unusual ride height issues before hitting the road. Pay close attention to the handling as you test drive the car. Additionally, you should keep an ear out for any of those sounds to come back, as this could mean that the fix did not solve the issue. Hope the information was useful for you. 
If so, please press the like button and subscribe to the channel.